empowered by the Holy Spirit. Empowered by, yeah, I'm wearing amen. the armor of God. Amen, amen. You amen. know, I mean, and if the person, I think that the reason uh, that God made me my nerdly election self is for this time. <laughs> And that is the new Trump-endorsed chairwoman of the Arizona Republican Party, Gina Swoboda, wearing the armor of God and sharing her secret power last week with Trump guru Steve Bannon. Can what Swoboda calls her nerdly election self end the Republican Party's election losing streak this November? Joining us to discuss that and much more, longtime Republican activist Tyler Montague and Democratic strategist Tony Connie of Slingshot Campaigns, a former top official with the Biden campaign here in Arizona and campaign manager for Phoenix Mayor Kay Gallego. Welcome back to Square Off. Thank you. Uh, before we start, any disclosures about any financial connections to people or issues we might discuss today? No. All right, good. Let's get going. Tyler, let's start with you. Gina Swoboda is the new leader of your party. On a scale of 1 to 10... How much confidence do you have that she can end this losing streak and lead the party to statewide victories in November? Uh, two. Two. And that's just because I'll give her a chance. Otherwise, you know, off the rudder of one. L listen, these, these election fraud conspiracies will win you a race among the far right, and that's how she became the, the party chair. But it's a losing message for Republicans because uh, swing voters don't believe in the, the conspiracies. And you also suppress your own vote uh, when you convince your own voters that mail-in voting's fraud, uh, equivalent to fraud, and, um, and you rely on in in poll voting. Uh, you know, one or two percent of your people are going to get sick or have an emergency, and that's the margin of these races. So it's really bad uh, strategy for the Republicans to, to do this. And here we have Gina Swoboda doubling down on that. Path. She is. There's another clip where she accuses Maricopa County of basically rigging elections just and, and breaking the law over and over. That's where she's at. She's kind of a non-traditional choice for a party leader, right? You want somebody who can recruit candidates, raise money. Un she's never done that. Unclear whether she could. Does that give Democrats hope? It's a weird choice because it's like you know, the Suns need a backup center, right? But instead they went and picked another point guard. Or something. Like It's just the wrong person to fill the role if I was thinking about the administration of the party because what it's doing is it's sending a signal to Republicans that have been convinced that their votes don't count that hey you're right your vote doesn't count but we got this lady who's very smart who's going to be able to keep fighting in the courts for you that's not going to win like that is not a winning message this whole election fraud stuff people are exhausted with it and it's you know when it comes time to running this party she's gonna I don't know if she has the experience it's, it's a losing message, and serious donors, uh, the business community, other traditional uh, center-right constituencies don't want to donate to it. They don't want to be part of it, and so she will be ineffective. Ineffective. Let's follow up on the app, uh, Republican Party annual meeting. Last week, there was a smattering of boos mm -hmm. uh, for Carrie Lake there. Um, a lot of dissatisfaction. I use the word a lot, can mean a lot, but, it, you know, it's there. How significant is that? Well, Carrie Lake's learning what uh, all politicians eventually learn is that when you take controversial positions and do controversial things, you start to carve out and alienate pieces of your support. So those boos were real. Uh, she surreptitiously recorded Jeff DeWitt and uh, tried to spin it as uh, some sort of corruption. And it turns out when the campaign finance reports came out, she had a, a, a job working for DeWitt, and apparently it was just a, a cash pass-through sort of arrangement. Uh, and so that I think that alienated part of the base down there. I think, I think that was a big part of the booze. Uh, thank you for that transition, the pivot to our next subject, because that's where I'm going now. She released her financial disclosure report after, a couple days after the annual meeting, and we learned she earned at least $102,000 for what was likely a no-work job as a communications advisor being carried there for, for two years. Um, <laughs> you're shaking your head. Have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, it's good work if you can get it, right? right. You get a job where you don't have to show up or do anything and you get paid $100,000, that's, that's great. It's, you know, another well, hey, thing about I, that I'll is... I'll do it without recording. <laughs> <laughs> she delayed the release of that financial disclosure as many times as she could. She got extensions, and probably because, you know, she knew it was going to come out and there would be some scrutiny on her about this. And, you know, like, this is a job that she had when she was 
running for governor, which is a thing that I don't think anybody knew about. And so it's, 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 I, th I think that part of the reason why there was these big, powerful people back east thinking that they could give her more money to get her to not run for Senate is because they knew she was already getting a bunch of money for this kind of a job. It's just wild stuff. Uh, let's dig into her fundraising numbers. You know, I said this a few weeks ago, and I think it's still true. The numbers just seem lackluster for somebody who's a national figure. She didn't keep up with Ruben Gallego in, in, in her first quarter, with his uh, first quarter. Her cash on hand was posted as $1 million, but it's probably less than that because her fundraisers cut her a break. They didn't charge her for $300,000. How that, surprised are you by those numbers? Well, I mean, it, it seems to me that that whole thing where she has $300,000 in debt when they have cash on hand is bizarre. And I expect, I, my guess is, this is purely a guess, is that they were preparing to file this paperwork and they realized we're going to show that we have under a million dollars on hand. And so they didn't pay those bills yet. Because, you know, when you're on a campaign, when you're spending this kind of money, you're not using a credit card or writing a check. You're wiring the money. It becomes automatic. It'll show up immediately in your financial disclosures or in your campaign finance reform. So it's, it's weird. The amount of money that she spent on consultants is way higher than you expected. Fundraising consultants, digital consultants. It's just a huge burn of her... Money And, of course, more money is going to come in, but it seems like, and a lot of money on travel, a lot of money on catering, just it doesn't seem like it's a very good campaign yet. Yeah, and to be fair, that kind of massaging the numbers is not unusual to get it to a certain number. Like, people, candidates love a million. They love round numbers. Yeah. Not unusual, but there it is. Uh, Carrie Lake does it, too. Yep, apparently. Uh, and... Is this a sign of things to come? Because we have Ruben Gallego also burning through cash at a relative, relatively high rate. Yeah, it's gonna, this is going to be a record-setting race in terms of how much is spent. Is this, this, it'll be tens of millions of dollars uh, from each candidate to be viable. And, um, and out, the outside money is going to be crazy. The cost of conducting uh, political messaging in Arizona will be astronomical. I saw a, a post by someone that tracks <clears throat> advertising costs. Arizona is the highest in the country. It's the highest in the country. In, in the country right now. <laughs> Got to talk about independent Senator Kirsten Cinema posted her worst fundraising quarter in three years. This is somebody who loves to raise money. Uh, <clears throat> what stands out is the hundreds of thousands of dollars she spent on security. And I don't know if there's a real threat or not, but it's... It's a lot of spending. Is that the kind of fundraising number you'd expect to see from someone who is thinking of running for re-election? No, and I, I'm the one been saying forever I think she's going to run. I mean, I, or at least she thought she was running. I wonder whether or not they have figured out that the path for her to win is very challenging, and so no, they're, they're no longer focusing on campaign. I just don't know. But, but the you know that spending has been happening for the past couple of years. These very high amount on travel, very high amount on security. And, you know, I do think that one of the things that's getting out is the word is getting out to donors. So it's like, are they, is she spending the money in the way that we want it to be spent? And I also think that, you know, more and more people are starting to think she's not going to run. And so that probably is affecting her fundraising. I think a big distinction here between, you know, Lake in the future, Gallego now, and Cinema is that Ruben's money, Ruben Gallego's money, is a lot of small dollar donations. A lot of it's recurring. And so that means that that money is going to be there. So he's able to start building and spending now in a way that cinema probably can't because she's relying on these big checks, and those big checks are starting to go away. Mm -hmm. And it looks like she's banking on the border bill as some kind of platform either for a re-election campaign or her next job. Yeah, I think, I, you know, and I just think donors aren't convinced that she's running and aren't convinced that she has a clear path to win. And they're always very pragmatic with their money. Uh, the, the border bill would be quite an accomplishment, really. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to, to push her through. There's just no proven path for an independent in a race with a Democrat and a Republican. They're both viable. Uh, yeah. that, in fact, but having her in there might be Carrie Lake's best path to actually win. Yeah. Uh, that might figure into her decision, too. I don't know. All right. Got to end it there.